Thank you to Erica Clemens for the processional music. Another round of applause again for Erica. Good evening. I'm Dr. Robert Collier, principal of the 10 through 12 Center, and I'd like to welcome all of our parents, grandparents, siblings, friends, teachers, and special guests to Springport Area High School and tonight's National Honor Society induction ceremony. Over 67 years ago, the Springport National Honor Society was chartered, and tonight is our 68th induction ceremony. At this time, I ask that we take a moment, stand, and recite the pledge to our nation's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. In just a few moments, we will acknowledge 86 fine young adults who have fulfilled all the requirements necessary for induction into the Spring Forward National Honor Society. I would like to congratulate the efforts of not only the students who will be inducted this evening, but the support systems each one may have in your parents, friends, families, and teachers. We will hear tonight that our inductees have demonstrated the qualities of scholarship, leadership, character, and service. Students, our hope is that these ideals continue to shape your actions and motivate you long after induction as well. Congratulations on your hard work and dedication. Tonight, our inductees will be introduced in three waves. Each wave will proceed to the risers individually and a group picture will be taken before they leave the stage. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Murray, Assistant Superintendent of Schools, for a few remarks. Good evening and welcome faculty, families, and most importantly, tonight's inductees. Tonight represents the culmination of a tremendous amount of work and effort, as well as the beginning of a journey towards an immeasurable success and opportunities. Please know that on behalf of the school board, administration, and staff, we are extremely proud of you and your accomplishments that led you to tonight's induction. It is by no accident that you're here this evening, and you are now in league with prior graduates that took advantage of all that Springport had to offer. As you'll hear tonight, these candidates demonstrated exemplary performance in the area of scholarship, leadership, character, and service, which are the cornerstone qualities of the National Honor Society. To illustrate this point, please allow me to share some data. In grades 9 through 12, there are approximately 500 students enlisted as either NHS candidates or NHS members. Each year, each candidate and member is required to complete at least 15 volunteer community service hours, maintain an overall GPA of 95%, and actively participate in at least two school clubs or one major activity. This year alone, Springford NHS candidates and members have completed at least 7,500 volunteer hours. We have 86 students being inducted tonight. They have completed 3,824 hours of community service. They have all participated in a variety of school-sponsored clubs, music programs, and athletic teams while maintaining a 95% or higher overall GPA since their ninth grade year. Each student was highly recommended by their teachers, coaches, and program leaders. To sum it up, they've been pretty busy. So as I wrap up my time, I just wanted to say again, congratulations, and thank you for being great ambassadors for Springboard. And now please welcome House Principal, Mr. Jeff Collar to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Murray. Faculty, parents, and students, welcome to the 2024 National Honor Society induction ceremony. We are gathered here to formally recognize students who will be inducted as new members of our NHS chapter. These students have been selected by the faculty of our school for successfully completing their candidacy requirements. For current members and former members who may be among our guests, we remind you of the standards of excellence you are charged with maintaining as members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. 
Our chapter is proud to have been inducting members for decades, and today's ceremony indicates the continuing emphasis on excellence we represent for our school and community. Throughout the year, members of our chapter serve as role models for other students. In addition to the strong academic records which established our students' eligibility for membership, our chapter members are leaders in many student organizations throughout our school and community. We are proud of these accomplishments as we welcome inductees who will bring new energy and support to our continuing work in the National Honor Society. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Jeremy Ionelli, our keynote speaker, to address our current members and new inductees. Yeah, I know. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, parents, students, families, teachers, administrators, National Honor Society senior members, and National Honor Society inductees. My name is Jeremy Ionelli, and I teach computer science here at Springport High School. I am honored to be here as the keynote speaker this evening for the second year in a row. Students, I want to thank you for the opportunity to return this year. And I know that Jason Kelsey wasn't available. <laughs> it's not a secret. Probably out gallivanting with Tay-Tay and Travis. So I hope that I will suffice. I am so proud to call so many of our inductees tonight my current or former students. It is a privilege to work with all of you. I want to start off by offering my sincerest congratulations to each and every one of you. Your accomplishments over the last three years have earned you my respect, my admiration, and of course, a round of applause. As you've heard, the National Honor Society is a club that is founded on three or four core principles, service, scholarship, character, and leadership. Dr. Murray did a great job as a preamble going through all of the service hours and all of the accolades that all of our students have accumulated over their last three years. In order to be a member of the National Honor Society, they have to exhibit all of these qualities in a really big and obvious way. For service, they have to do hundreds of service hours. For scholarship, they have to have a 95% GPA. For character, they have to write essays and they have to get recommendations from teachers talking about their dedication, their consistency, their honesty, their trustworthiness. And for leadership, they have to... What do they have to do? They... I guess you just have to be a leader? Leadership is the one area of the National Honor Society that I believe is the most difficult to quantify. Leaders come in all different shapes and sizes and all different demeanors. Some leaders are quiet leaders who lead by example. Others are charismatic and loud. I don't know who that would be. Others are the best player on the team. Others are the hardest worker on the team. And the list goes on. Indeed, being a leader is quite subjective when we think about it. So how do we quantify this? How do we say that all of our wonderful students here, all 86 of them, are good leaders? Since I know so many of you, I'm going to try to get into your minds just for a moment. I believe it's a scary place, I agree. I think that many of our students here this evening would say that a leader is a role model. A leader is someone who is one of the smartest people in the room, a student with some of the highest grades in the room, with the highest potential. A leader is something for others to aspire to be. A leader leads by example. A leader shows the way to others through their exemplary performance. Students, that is not quite a leader. That is more a winner than a leader. So what is a leader then? Very difficult to quantify, but I'm going to try to do it this evening. I believe that through your pursuit of excellence and your idea of what you think a leader is, you've actually been working against the idea in some ways of being a good leader. I was raised by my great grandparents, my mother's grandparents. We affectionately called them my nan and pop. 
And my pops, God rest his soul, was my best friend for most of my life. He is the man I credit with showing me how to be an adult, and more importantly, how to be a leader. When you grow up with someone that is four generations older than you, number one, they're going to be really hard on you, let me tell you. But second, they're going to impart to you wisdom that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. My pops had a lot of really nice sayings that I think about daily. And one of them that he used to say is, Son, don't ever be the smartest person in the room. And I never really understood why that was. But now I think I might have a handle on it. So let me elaborate. When you're the smartest person in the room, that means you have no one to learn from. If you have no one to learn from, you don't have any growing to do. And if you don't have any growing to do, you are now stagnant, which is a very scary place to be indeed. Another thing that he used to say to me is, Jeremy, surround yourself with people that are smarter than you are. Are you telling me you don't want me to be the best? And he would say, if you surround yourself with people that are smarter than you, you will grow along with them. You will learn from emulating what they do, from picking up things from them. And that will make you not only a more talented individual, but a more capable leader. So to me, here's what a leader is. Someone who is willing to listen. A leader is a learner, a lifelong learner. Leaders learn from others. Leaders don't know it all, and they're willing to admit it. A leader is someone who empowers others and lifts them up, is about the team rather than about themselves. Yes, they care about their personal growth, but their personal growth goes hand in hand with the growth of the team. Leaders put the we before the me. So how do we do that? Number one, to our National Honor Society members this evening, when you find yourself as the smartest person in the room, the smartest thing you can do is find another room. The best thing that you can do as a leader is not try to be the best, but try to get the best out of yourself and out of everyone else. That's what leaders do. Leaders celebrate good ideas, even if they're not yours. Leaders listen to other perspectives and empower others to show their talents. This is what you are charged with this evening. I can speak from personal experience when I say that the students I teach, many of which that are sitting here this evening, are some of the best and brightest that Spring Forward has to offer. Really some of the best and brightest that our society at large has to offer, and you deserve that praise through and through. The question is, what will you now do with all of your gifts? I hope, to my core, that you will use your gifts to truly be a leader, and that means lifting up others. That means listening to others' perspectives. That means empowering others to show their talents, because you win when we win. That's what leaders do. I thank you for having me this evening. Good luck in your future endeavors, and welcome to the National Honor Society. My name is Paige Dickerman, and I am the president of the Spring Forward Chapter of the National Honor Society. It is at this time that we proclaim to all in attendance that membership in the Spring Forward Senior High School Chapter of the National Honor Society has been earned by these candidates through the effective demonstration of the four pillars that serve as standards for the society. Chapter officers will now review these pillars for the candidates beginning at leadership. And I wish I had known Mr. Ionelli would make his whole speech about that. The best leaders are forged through failure and experience so that they may use their wisdom and experience to guide those they serve. In taking initiative in the school and general community, 
the real leader strives to train and aid others to reach their common goals of success, despite often having to pay the price that all leaders must pay, sacrifice, shown by the willingness to yield one's personal interests for the interests of all. While others run from challenges, the leader charges ahead, paving the path for their successors. A school, community, or even nation may have more power and resources than anyone else, yet they will still fail if they are not helped by the gentle yet firm hand of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed, making it one of the most crucial traits a person can have. Our chapter vice president, Gayatri Gumaste, will now describe the pillar of scholarship. Scholarship. Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours reading and studying, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivate, cultivated mind. We should continue to learn, even when formal education has ended, for human education ends only with the end of life. Knowledge is one great element in life, which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past. It is the torch that guides us to understand the present and the light that illuminates the future. Candidates have the duty to continually expand their world through opportunities inherent in scholarship. Our chapter secretary, Vaishnavi Vatso, will now describe the pillar of character. Character is the force within the individual that distinguishes each person from others. It creates for each of us our individuality, our goodness. It is that without which no one can respect oneself, nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is the force of character that guides one through life, and once developed, grows steadily within. Character is achieved, and not received. It is the product of constant thought and action, daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must be in reality what we wish to appear to others, to be, rather than to seem. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to prove by example that we value character. Our chapter treasurer, Ankita Chakraborty, will now describe the pillar of service. established in the routine of the day's work where many opportunities arise to help others both at school and in the community. A willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or public recognition is the quality we seek in our membership and promote for the entire student body. We are committed to volunteering our time and talents to the creation of a better tomorrow. we will present our new inductees. Please step forward onto the stage when your name is called to receive your token of membership.
Isabella Acosta. Lily Anders. Lauren Angelucci. Devin Armour. Gracie Also Manning. Ava Bainbridge. Madison Bacus. Matteo Bucci. Yash Chavon. Daniel Chu. Ashley Coleman. Elena Cooper. Alex Curry. Riley Saber. Parker Delgado. Neil Dixit. Druckenmiller. Miller, <laughs> Eva Jumbor, <laughs> Connor Ellison, <laughs> Ryan Fields. Declan Finney. Ben Fish. Jordan Ford. Emily Fry. Lashea Fulmer. Anjali Ganta. Eva Gibbons. Cohen Graf. Jordan Gutschall. Sean 
Natalie Hinn. Ava Hesson. Emma Hokinson. Connor Hudak. Bridget Irwin. Andrew Kircher. Tyler Call. Vani Courier. Hannah Kaufman. Abigail Kohler. Rashika Kopje. Allison Lewis. Sophia Libby. Henry Liu. Ryan Lynch. Jordan Marsilio. John Miscavige.
Jay Mojite. Arul Morthy. Matthew Moyer. Haley Motsi. Catherine Mole. Bhavani Mayor. Mahita Nakela. Zach Parker. Alex Parcia. Devin Patel. Ishan Patel. Sarah Personius. Karina Pruce. Haley Prophet. Chakri Pulipaka. Avery Rapalowski. Leah Wren. Taylor Resibuto. Patrick Rose. Christian Ruiz. Sarah Rutkowski. Sandeep Senthukumar. Zara Shakur. Nolan Schaefer. Alicia Singh. Gina Singh. Stella Stein. Bavika Tanasia. J. 
Jada Tornetta. Barkley Trotter. Abby Tudoris. Chitraksh Upa. Nathan Varghese. Lila Weingarten. <laughs> Jocelyn Wright. <laughs> Maeda Yelani. Syrah Zachariah. <laughs> Ethan Sang. <laughs> and Olivia Zaverick. Oh, we're not over, guys. Sorry, I thought you were all getting up. Uh, will the new inductees? Oh, sorry. Okay.
All right, well, after my lovely awkwardness, will the new inductees please raise your right hand and repeat the pledge. The audience can follow the text as printed in your program. I pledge to uphold, I pledge to uphold. the high purposes of the National Honor Society To which, I have been selected. to which I have been selected. I will be true to the principles for which it stands and will maintain and encourage, and maintain and encourage the, high standards the high standards of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. Thank you all for attending the NHS induction ceremony. In just a moment, the new inductees will leave, after which you are all invited to join us in the cafeteria for a reception in their honor. But before doing so, please join me once again in applauding all of our new Honor Society members. Thank you. And now, will everyone please stand as our newest members of the National Honor Society recess. 